Hello everybody. Hi and welcome to the Picking Brains podcast. As you probably saw just then, we have the amazing Jackie Small today with us from uh, I Survived a Zombie Apocalypse. Uh, she was a contestant on the show. Uh, she unfortunately met her demise on the show as well. Uh, not in real life though, as you can see, she's here alive, breathing and well. Um, <laughs> she then went on to write her dystopian novel inspired by kind of like her appearance on the show and it is called wait for me which you can get on amazon and we will link in the description so hello everybody how are we all doing good yeah hi guys good. hi very very good amazing yeah so if you don't know my name is charlie hi we have saz meg below and obviously jackie with us today yeah amazing so right so first of all we're going to start talking about um the show so i survived a zombie apocalypse if that's okay it absolutely interested in how you even got into it in the first place what made you even want to apply for it as well so can you tell us a little bit about that process yeah yeah and we've got i've got my daughter to thank or blame for that however you <laughs> want to look at it <laughs> Um, I, um, I've always had an interest in apocalyptic type scenarios and zombies in particular and zombie films and media, but um, I was in between jobs um, and I was having a bit of a break and my daughter um, emailed me this, you know, the, in the call, if you like, asking for people to volunteer and um, I had a look at it and thought, you know, why not? I've always wondered if I really would survive in a zombie apocalypse. I've man imagined it many, many times. And so this was my chance to um, actually have a go and see if I could do it. I think a lot of the other contestants, for, you know, everyone did it for different reasons. But for me, it was simply that I really wanted to experience a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> However crazy that sounds. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, I that. think we'd all want to have a go at it as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 we would. I remember sitting there when I was younger watching it, just being like, oh, "When, when's my turn? Like, when do I, I know. know? When season two, we're like, how can my 18th birthday come a bit quicker so I can apply for this thing? Yeah. And then it happened, and I'm like, never mind. How did, how you, actually, would, how did you get how picked old for you it? Would Sorry? How did you actually get picked for it? Get picked, well, I filled in an application form online, and, and I think, you, it, you know, a few, paid, a few pages of, why I wanted to do it and why I thought I'd be good good at it. Sent it off, never expecting in a million years to hear anything. And I was quite shocked when about 40 minutes later, um, I got a phone call from the team oh. asking me if I was deadly serious and talked to me a bit more. And I thought, oh my God, what have I, what have I got myself? <laughs> And then um, I think if I remember rightly, they said, oh, we'll, you know, we'll be in touch. And then maybe a few weeks later, they asked me to go up to Manchester for what they called a casting or the, the, they did like a video, I think, because I'm not from the acting world. I wouldn't really know what it was all about, but I think they videoed me and asked me a few questions on video and then said they'd get back after that. And yeah, sure enough, a few weeks later, they got back and said, no, you're, you're definitely on. So yeah, it was very nerve wracking. And then there was a period of time with exchanges of, I think we had to have a psychological assessment to make sure we, all, we wouldn't go insane with the stress and anxiety of it all. And <laughs> how to manage our social media, lots of advice about that, privacy settings and things. And um, we had to send them some clothes oh. so that they could sort of mush them up a little bit. Oh, that and then um, that sort of thing. And yeah, that was that was all the lead up to it. Oh, that's wow. amazing. That seems like a very quick process, especially when you 40 minutes yeah. or so after the the uh, uh, application. Um, blimey, that was quick. That's really fast. It was. I can't remember how long the whole thing took from start to finish, but it was probably not not more than a few months build up, I think. I'm sure the others would correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. Mm, that's amazing. And sorry, you were saying earlier wow. how old would we have been when the show yeah. aired. What, what year was... What you, it was I'm six years ago. I, <laughs> I think, if I remember from what Stevie said a couple of weeks ago, it was six years ago. Yeah, it was so funny. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 14. 13. <clears throat> 20, 23, 24 ish. So some of you shouldn't even have been watching it. <laughs> I, I only just learned about it um, 
like the other week. Yeah. So I only just watched it this weekend. I binged it actually. Oh, all right. Yeah. So can you still so. see it somewhere fairly easily then? Yeah. It's yeah. on Ro- it's on Roku streaming, so you can. So anybody who's oh, okay. watching this, if you want to okay. go see it and you've got a Roku stick, you can watch it on uh, Roku streaming channel. Okay. Um, I'm not and sure. It's also on YouTube. On YouTube. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah, so, I did a binge watch the other day, yeah. like <laughs> straight away. Like, <laughs> not sure I could bear to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> how what? How was it watching it yourself? It was an interesting experience because it's very, what's the word, manipulated in some ways in that if you think that we were all in there for 24 hours a day, but I was there for six six days. And one of the guys actually worked out how much footage there was of us. And it was something like 15 minutes per episode. So they, the producers were selecting, you know, 15 minutes of 24 hours to, to show and I think they managed to portray people and portray scenarios and relationships, you know, in the way that they wanted to, which is what they do, you know, that's what you sign up for. So that was quite interesting. Um, do, you, do you feel like that happened a lot with yourself as well? Do you feel like a lot of what you did was portrayed in a different light to how it actually happened? Not, not really, not for me as much perhaps as some of the others, because if there was any sort of arguments or emotional outbursts or anything, um, they would obviously, they'd make good TV, so they'd focus in on these where they might not be representative of that person's entire time in there. I think I, think I was very controlled probably for the first sort of five to six days you know I was conscious of the fact that my friends and family were watching me and I think it was only when I really lost my temper once with Jordan and I swore yes. at him that my, <laughs> that my best friend said she just wet herself because she thought there it is, there it is the real Jackie coming out you know at last and I almost treated it like a, an exercise I suppose um, a very frightening exercise but an exercise yeah what was the worst and best thing of the entire time? What was the worst and best part of the experience for you? I think the best part, which start with that, was the was the people. You know, every single one of us, they were all lovely people, and we've stayed in touch. You know, over the, over the years, even now, we sort of follow each other and so on. And even Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah even blessed him no he's lovely he's got a little <laughs> career going on in media he's trying to make oh, nice. films and things like oh, that's that that's really good yeah. and um no we do they were lovely people in fact afterwards uh, you know because we had to cook such awful food in there that and i really wanted to cook them something nice so they all came to my house a few months oh, after lovely. Them all, i gave them all requests as to whatever they wanted and i cooked whatever they wanted tom wanted a prawn cocktail <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so that was the best bit was the people and you know spending a lot of time with young people and and getting to understand them everybody was they were all lovely honestly really really nice people and um, the worst bit was for me I was genuinely terrified I would say for genuinely terrified for the first 48 hours I felt physically sick I was so frightened you know and that was probably the worst bit just constantly feeling really stressed and yeah. anxious um it was I had to get a grip on myself you know I had you probably weren't aware but on maybe the second night it was I think there was a terrible terrible thunderstorm and um yeah rain, yeah they seem rain. but it but that happened in in real life you know and the whole place was flooded out and we all had to move all our beds in the middle of the night there was obviously a lot of electrical equipment there and things and I think that was a bit of a turning point where I just thought oh this is just getting beyond (laughs) beyond a joke you know I've really got to get a grip of myself and Sarah and I had to get a bit of a pep talk because I think we were probably the most too frightened the others were ever ever so brave yeah and um, I think that was a turning point then, definitely. So, just so especially in those first 48 hours, it felt really real for you? It did. It was very frightening. It's hard to explain because it sounds silly when you know that they're all actors, these people. But it didn't feel like that. It really didn't. And 
I think the tension built up because they kept you in a in a hotel for I think it was maybe two or three days before it actually started and you weren't allowed out of your room and and then on the day that it it started I think they were a day late starting and then um you had to be taken in a blacked out sort of taxi it felt like to some place where you sat in a room for it and it was just all that build up and with no yeah. idea because they were very good at keeping it all a secret you had no idea where you were going or what it was going to be like so it was a bit of a reaction yeah. and there was a bit of fear not just of the zombies a bit of fear about gosh I've been here I've gone through all this to get into this and I really want to have the experience I don't want to be eaten in the first five minutes yeah. and then it all be for nothing yeah yeah so there was there was quite a lot of um, psychological preparation then for it to sort of get you guys in the mindset that you are entering sort of the apocalypse yeah, yeah, we, we were told, we weren't given any details at all about where it was or what it was going to be like, just that it was going to be a re very realistic, immersive experience and to be prepared for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, certainly, certainly, yeah. we certainly know. We um, understand. Uh, Tom Invasion, yeah, uh, it can feel real. You know, people, uh, even for our two-hour experiences, people get fully immersed in it. They, mm. I've seen people come completely different people and they just get so involved in the story oh. and sometimes people do get so scared to a point where it takes them a while to realize it isn't actually yeah. real but that's what we want yeah. we want people to be fully yeah. immersed so yeah we, we definitely mean, get it even if one of us guys goes and does one of our own experiences sort of thing we sort of we forget and I mean I know that I've got really into it even though like I know I know the infected around me. Yeah. I know who they are. <laughs> and I know they're not infected. I know they're my mates and everything like that. They're my work um, colleagues. And uh, I'm just still going, ah! <laughs> 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 shooting at them. So, because I've um... personally done our York one, um, and I have done our one in Shepton Mallet prison. So, I know sort of that it's felt quite real. Yeah. And that's somebody who actually works with everybody. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely felt very realistic. Definitely, <laughs> very frightening. I mean, I, mean, I mean, I've assumed that sort of a lot of that um, initial feelings was why there was quite so many tears as well in the first few days, um, as people died. Like, obviously, you guys knew it wasn't real that they hadn't actually died but there was quite a few tears about in the group what was yeah. that mainly down to I think that was as much about the sort of bonding in the group and people becoming quite close to each other and disappointment and upset for people you know that nobody wanted it wanted to go and everybody brought something to the dynamic of the experience yeah. and it was such it was it was a shame when and I think particularly for the the group who were there from from day one you know where we're all thrown in together yeah. I think it was really tough yeah. and you know I even had a moment of having a, being a bit tearful which I never imagined that that would ever happen to me and something like that but I think it might have been after after Jonas went actually and some of the girls yeah. got really upset and I, yeah. I found myself bit getting caught up in it as well and I thought he's not really dead yeah. he's sitting somewhere Me having a slap up meal instead of a <laughs> beans or something I was going to say, yeah, that reminds me, we were um, talking to the Abomination last week. Uh, he said, yeah. yeah, as soon as they come out, they get like Dr. Pepper, they get like a massive pizza. And like a snack. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a curry. Um, it, when, when you come out, they take you to Tesco's because all your stuff is in the, the place, in the, in, the, in the shop. And you haven't got a toothbrush or anything like that. So you're covered in blood because you've had your ear torn off and you're up, you know, and hit blood in your hair and everything. And they take you around Tesco's in some town nearby. I think it might have been Livingston or something. And then um, to get a toothbrush and things and then go back and um, I would curry it was really really nice i was absolutely craving a curry. Yeah, so I was gonna say, it's really the, the curry. best curry in your life. The Oh yeah, it was lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, so good. I mean, talking about the abomination, that was um, season six, uh, episode six. Ep mm -hmm. Yeah, episode six. Sorry, 
Mm. <laughs> we know what we're talking about. So there was the the introduction of the abomination, and there was quite a few challenges as well. Um, there was an awful. It, was, it also got a little bit heated in that episode as well with discussions about um, who was going to go out and do the challenges because there was four challenges in that episode. There was the water run, um, then the run to the lab. Then right. it was the yep, uh, army lab, the the air air duck, air yeah. and then it was the actual challenge that uh, was your demise with yes. uh, actually trying to get rid of the abomination. Yeah. Uh, how how was it doing sort of those those tasks that day? How talk us through that day? Yeah, I mean, the build up to that day had been quite interesting because um, at first there was lots of people that were really willing to volunteer for everything. And I mean, Amina was amazing. You oh, know, she, she was amazing. She, oh, abs- well, my, my, char- my main character in my book is a little bit based on her because she was just so incredibly brave and reckless. Well, everybody was. I mean, I was terrified. I think Sarah and I would admit that we were probably the most terrified. I would have done anything not to have gone on a mission. And I think I was kind of hoping that I could get away with it and survive a bit like carol in the walking dead by getting all the yeah. men to protect you because you're a mother figure that does all the cooking and cleaning and things. <laughs> but it soon it soon became clear that i wasn't good enough at that and i wasn't cherished enough by them to for them to so you, were, was, you weren't given a good enough food to um obviously not happen. no no so um, we sort of started saying, well, you know, it's about time everyone took their fair turn of the missions. And so I said, yeah, fine, yeah, I'm happy to go with that, go with the next one. And then there was a series of quite controlled missions where I was all ready to go on a mission and they said, no, everybody had to go. Do you remember when we all went out on the Saturday yeah, night in the car, car or something? Yeah, the car. Oh, yeah, I one. think that was the one that I was supposed to have been going to do a mission on. And then there was just one thing after another happened. And so we were we were ready to do it. And it came to it that it was going to be the water. Now, the water is an interesting one because the water is really heavy. To carry yeah. these two big containers of water is heavy. And in some ways, it makes sense for somebody strong to, to do that. Yeah, it does but, make but, sense. But I think it was Leah and I who did that that day. Yeah. And I mean, I watched the, your your thing with the um, the abomination last week. It was it was really funny. His perspective on that was fascinating, really, because you know we're there, and I was just trying to be calm and everything on that water mission. And Leah was terrified. You know, yeah. I think I was terrified too, but yeah. I was trying to keep her calm. And we saw this one big zombie at the end, and I just thought, oh, we, you know, we're all right. We've got to get the water. We can't look as if we're just going to drop it and run just because yeah. a zombie's appeared. You know, it's, you like, can't it's one zombie. And, yeah, no, exactly. And he's Aye. not going to be on us in a second. We've still got time to um, fill up the bottle and get back. But it was pretty pretty quick and he ended up turning out to be of course sort of a super zombie really so that was that and then yeah during the day there was quite a lot of tension because I think I think the next oh that, that's right because at one point we'd had a discussion about who was best equipped to do different types of missions that was it I've forgotten it so long ago and if it was like a mine thing I said well I'd be happy to do that and obviously it was a physical thing there were people that were better equipped to do running around and carrying heavy things and crawling through little tiny spaces so when they said it was a mind mission the one going to the lab and somebody came down and said oh this is yours Jackie I said you've got to be joking I've literally just got back from the water thing <laughs> I know it's like you want me to go back out there when he's still yeah. running around yeah it doesn't work like that, that. And um, so I think Sarah went on that, didn't she, with somebody else? I can't remember who she went with. with. The, uh, I think when Sarah went, it was with Leah with the cans that were all put up and That's the blind right. zombie to get the key for the antibiotics. That's and then it was right. Nick and, then and Jordan. Jordan. It was yes. Nick and Jordan for that one. Yes. And that was the bit where there was a bit of, I mean, yes, it was true that I think, I can't remember the details, but there was definitely a lot of gossip going on about Jordan and what he was up to, what game he was playing or wasn't playing. And and in the end, um, I think, I can't, you probably know better than me. Yeah, there, there, was, been... <laughs> there was ended up being a discussion about, let's try and get Jordan to go to, to go. Because he was trying to send Jordan. everybody else. Yes, he was like, "Go on then, Jackie. Go on, do this. You, you do next. Yes, you do next." I think, like... Yes, 
anyway, we sent him and he, and he got killed. It was, it was a shame. Oh. <laughs> did, you, did you feel a bit guilty? <laughs> Oh yes, or not. of course. He, he's so <laughs> sweet. He's lovely. Honestly, we did feel guilty, but I think I actually think, thinking back then, by then, so it was day six, I think we'd all gone a little bit mad, if I'm honest. You know, all gone a I'm bit not weird. No, yeah. I'm not surprised either. Yes, because it was weird when um, you know, the girl came in, the twins. Um, it all yes, it all went that a bit was funny genius. then. And, but that, that was all really got good. a bit unpleasant. You know, it definitely got a bit unpleasant. It, was, it wasn't real, but some of the unpleasantness started to feel a little bit real even back then. And uh, I think she well, picked yeah. up on... You'd, you'd on even the, have the, the girl who came in infected yeah. already before yeah. that point Tasha. as well. Yeah, you know, that's you, right. You'd sort of figured out that you weren't... You were like, we've got to watch her. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think you were I think you were a lot more clued up than some of the others as well at that yeah. point. But I was still playing the game, you know, I was playing yeah. the game. I mean, we were obviously meant to think that she was infected and you know, getting everyone to stand on one leg and put their fingers on their nose and everything. It, it did all feel like a game, but I think she we were hostile to her because we were suspicious and worried that we might be set, being set up. And there were lots of conversations that were never shown about where she come from. Is she from another group? Is there some, a group of, we didn't know anything. We had no information. Yeah. So we started oh, okay. to get quite sort of suspicious. And I think she picked up on, on that suspicion. And when she was saying um, she wasn't feeling well, I genuinely didn't know whether she wasn't feeling well in real life or yeah. whether she had been, it was all part of her character with her to say she wasn't feeling yeah. well to make us suspect. And I felt really guilty for being unsympathetic to her, but at the same time, we had to protect ourselves. Yeah, yeah you had to be careful. Well, you'd all become quite a tight knit by that point as well. And yeah, you got yeah, that you shared had, yeah. experience of yeah, being yeah. in it for several days, which yeah. in that kind of experience, days is an extremely long time. Oh gosh, yeah. And yeah. Yes. And then yeah. to have somebody new come in, you're always going to be a bit suspicious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And in your case, and think, three new people. Yeah. And I think towards the end, that tightness that we had together was that even that was under pressure and tension because it was getting to the crunch, if you like, you know, with one day left. And it was a competition after all. And people, whatever yeah. they say, everyone wanted to try and win whatever. Yeah. Whatever they're mm -hmm. with, yeah. We have a yeah. couple questions uh, from oh, yeah. uh, our audience. Um, okay. uh, Greg says, uh, I bet there were loads of jokes when we went into lockdown. Did it kind of feel similar to kind of that, do you reckon? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, hang on a minute. We locked in a shop in the same clothes for a week with no food. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't anything like lockdown. Lockdown was oh, a breeze. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, we also got a comment from James as well. He says, uh, when you put the zombie guts on, how bad was it and what did it smell like? When we put the zombie guts on? Was that was that at the end or was that in the shop? Um, I don't think I was in the shop when it was Amina, I think, who yeah. got the zombie yeah. guts on. James, so that was the her. day after. That was day seven. Yes. Yeah. yes. No, I don't think I... I um, I ever had to do that, thankfully. Thankfully. But I believe that it was unpleasant because they said that they were retching with the smell. You, they you definitely could put... see their reactions. That yeah, it, yeah. It looked... and that was genuine. Yeah. It looked yeah. awful, like, nah. Yeah, <laughs> I, they must have put something like, something gross to smell in it really bad. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. a lot of fake blood actually Aroma smells prime. Quite, quite minty. It sounds yeah. weird, but yeah, a fake blood doesn't have a horrible smell to it, so they must have put no. something grim in it to... Yeah, ooh, really make it smell bad thing. you can yeah, get yeah. a lot of um fake bad smell stuff because yeah. a lot of stuff mm. is made through different chemicals so it wouldn't have been like actual moldy gross stuff but yeah yeah, yeah. it'd look like that mm -hmm. so going back to the abomination and mm -hmm. the trapping challenge the whole way through what were you thinking all the way up to that fateful moment in the freezer don't get killed. <laughs> <laughs> I 
don't, don't get caught. And there's also a bit of don't let anybody down. You know, you feel quite a lot of pressure. You know, at the end of the day, out of everybody in there, I was probably the least likely person to be able to charge around, you know, running around the, the site and be able to outrun the zombie. Um, so I thought, I don't want to let anyone down. And there was quite a few of us out there on, on that day. And I didn't want to let Aston down either. So that was it. But yeah, it was a funny one that um, I felt as if he was far enough away all the time that it didn't, I didn't feel terrified. I didn't feel frightened the whole time. It was just that very last moment where I, I think I think we might have run past the entrance to the freezer. And I think because yeah. Megan and Meg and Amina were hiding behind the door, they'd shouted. I think someone drew our attention to the fact that that's where it was. And I turned round to run back and came face to face with him coming the other way. And I thought, well, I haven't got any choice but to, to run in there, even knowing that he was going to be very, very close behind me. And I went in, and when you got in there, you couldn't see anything at all. It was just like mist yeah. everywhere. Oh, just, right. Yeah, yeah I couldn't, you, I couldn't you could it. tell from the video, you could tell that it was really foggy, yeah. really misty. Couldn't see a thing. Couldn't. I just ran. And I think what they had was like shelves, shelving units interspersed. So you would have had to yeah. zigzag in between. But I couldn't even tell that when I was in there. And I just went straight into the first unit and turned around, and there he was. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> So I'm, I'm so assuming what? that he kind of got you and then you had to refilm it. Yeah, so the minute you get caught, um, it stops. And all of a sudden, after feeling like you've been completely on your own in there with the zombies for a week, suddenly all these people appear. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'd, we'd had glimpses <laughs> of camp. Yeah, I know, it was weird. You've had glimpses of camera people from time to time on some of the outdoor missions, particularly the one where, where um, Nick and Jordan, you know, arrived and they were in the cage. There were some camera people around there. But other than that, you felt as if you were just on your own in this place. So suddenly all these people appear um, and it was a bit of a, a surprise. I actually think I burst into tears. It was actually sort of, sort of quite an emotional moment of thinking, oh my God, a bit of you is happy that it's all over, a bit of you is disappointed. But I think at the end of the day, I I didn't really mind if I, if I didn't, I didn't go in there to win a prize. I went in there to see if I could survive a zombie apocalypse. And I thought, well, if I die today, it's not the end of the world. You know, I've had the experience that I wanted to have. And then they set you up with, um, I think I had a, a fake you, arm yeah, up in my jacket and yeah. an ear and things stuck on and um, a blood capsule in the, in the mouth. And that's the bit where, you know, I'm not an actor and I had to pretend to, to be dying and sliding down the wall with blood dripping down my chin and everything. That was a bit strange. Um, but um, yeah, it was, I don't, I wasn't, I, w I wouldn't say I was frightened that day. It was more a bit of resignation. I think the fear was in the first few days. Um, I think by then it was just like, oh, you just, you become very hardened to it all. You yeah, know, I, I did notice the time in the group. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned that you said it felt quite alone. So did you have like any contact with like the producers when you were inside? Was it like completely fully immersed 24 hours that's where you stayed no it was completely completely immersed and you never and they never got in touch with the only way that anyone got in touch with you was through that room it was a bit like the diary room in big brother but it was the um, army and they'd send a message and you'd have to go and talk to them and that was the only way you had any communication and then they were quite stern you know if you tried to get other information out of them they wouldn't tell you and things and <laughs> I think when we had the floods that that time when the roof came in, there was a floods. There was a few men came in then to help us sort it out, but they were all dressed it like completely in black. It was quite frightening when they suddenly appeared. You know, who who are they? And I think oh, as wow. I say, there was there was a few. I mean, most of the time we didn't see anybody or hear from anybody at all. Like it was my wedding anniversary when I was when I was in there, and um, I did. 
asked the army if if they had any way of letting my partner know that it was wishing and they said well we'll see what we can do kind of thing if we can find them and but he told me that someone rang him at work um, from the tv show to wish him a happy anniversary Aww. but i didn't Aww. know that until i until mm. i got home and um, so that was quite quite funny so yeah, other than that, I mean, I say the one where where we were out with um, Jordan and Nick and the the cage. There, that day, there were um, a few cameramen around, and that was actually quite quite a surprise. You know, at one point, I ran around a corner and ran off in a certain direction, and realised that I couldn't go any further because there was a there was a cameraman standing in front of me, and I thought. <laughs> Well, if I get eaten because there's a cameraman in front of me, that doesn't seem very... Yeah, <laughs> that's not fair. fair. That's, that's not how it goes. Fair. And I think on the I, first... I would demand that we redid that bit. Yes. <laughs> that's not and actually fair. what happened was the zombie that was chasing me, he did sort of just turn and, and go off, even though after I thought I was dead meat. So I think maybe that had been prearranged. I don't know. Yeah. I was very amused to hear that I was... Uh, um, the top when CV said you know the abomination I was the top of the hit list for this <laughs> yeah I was gonna we were just about to touch on that yeah so yeah so with the whole from if you didn't see the podcast last week just a bit of a catch-up uh, we chat with Stevie Douglas the abomination from our survival zombie apocalypse and he said that the zombies had a hit list of everybody on the show and unfortunately Jackie was at the top of it and yeah so what do, you, what do you think kind of prompted that? And how did you oh, feel when you found out about it? I, I, it amused me. I thought it was very, <laughs> very funny. I, I think, I mean, that links into the reaction you get on social media. We can touch on that in a minute. But um, I um, I know exactly what happened then. It was when it was when we had the flood and, and Sarah and I, that night, we were just complete, complete wrecks. And I said to her, you know, we've got to get a grip of this. We've got to get ourselves together. We've got to start thinking of the fact that, you know, they're they're the they're the enemy. We've got to start standing up for ourselves and trying to take control of our fear and saying we're not going to be afraid. And so we deliberately went out and sort of like fronted up to them and we were quite rude to them. We did well, I, I gave them the finger and stuff like that. But it was all about it was all about me trying to somehow find some courage or yeah. something within that wasn't mean that I was going to be absolutely crippled with fear the whole time. We even painted our faces with lipstick, sort of war like paint. war paint sort of type like thing. Yes. And um, that was that was what that was all about. But because you think, I don't think I ever thought of the zombies as, as actors, as people with feelings. No. I actually thought of them yeah. as evil monsters that wanted to, <laughs> to eat us. <laughs> And it's because you've been immersed that. from the start. It's yeah. like you've known them as zombies from the start. And like yeah. if giving them the finger works a bit as a bit of a yeah. courage boost, yeah. do it. Yes, yeah. and that's what that's all it was, was the courage boost. So it is quite funny that actually something that was supposed to perhaps make me more able to deal with it probably ended up being a very bad strategy because it meant <laughs> they were out to get lost on your head, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh dear. Make, make them want to get you even more. Yeah. So, yeah. Can, can we watch that? Can we watch um Jackie's death? Yeah, I can. Can I we can stick it on? Bring it up in the background if you want to continue talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, can, we can see you. Yeah. Uh, abomination finally getting you. Yeah. Oof. Unfortunately. Oh, you yeah. literally. How did it feel being so close to the end and then falling at the last oh. hurdle? Yeah, I'm so saying genuinely, and I'm not. I'm not just saying this. I, I was very pleased to have had this, uh, had a six day experience because that's what I went into it for was Good the going. experience. And I would have been disappointed if I'd only had you know one or two days. Um, I never really wanted to win. I mean, I had a strategy because they, when you get your interview and everything, they ask you if you'll have a strategy, and you know, I thought, well, what is my strategy going to be? I'm not going to be the biggest or strongest or anything. But um, I also think that, you know, for some of the people who did win, they were far more deserving of the, the, the ultimate prize than I was. I probably would have felt quite bad if I had actually won the prize at the expense of someone like, I mean, Elisa or, you know, I mean, some of the others who went out early, like Tom, you know, he was really brave. 
and George yeah. was really brave, you know. And so, yeah, I think I think it was probably just perfect for me to have gone out then, um, yeah. and to have stayed any longer and held well, everybody up days. the following day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, six days is an absolutely incredible feat. Well, well the the amount of people that went before you, you had yeah. um, Luke, Tom, Kevin, Natasha, Jonas, Sarah, Jordan, all died before you. So, I mean, that's such good going. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, my, my strategy of avoiding missions was obviously great. <laughs> <laughs> Avoid it like I a think, large I think, it, I think it was the um, booster strategy that actually got you in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clearly, the antagonizing the zombies. Get you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Antagonizing yeah. the zombies is never the way to go. No. You will get gone. Oh, it's only a slow one, and then like three seconds later, it's pelting at your full speed. Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah, lasting six days. Sorry. Yeah. So lasting six days in this one apocalypse. How do you think you would actually do in a real zombie apocalypse? Would you fare any better, any worse? What do you think would happen if you were stuck in a zombie apocalypse for real? Well. I would hope, and this is what I said in my um, my piece that I put in, you know, my application, that I've watched enough zombie movies and read enough zombie books and played enough zombie computer games to actually probably have a better chance than the average person of surviving. And um, well, the older you get, the less quick you are and the, the less strong you are. So that would definitely be a disadvantage. But no, I think my knowledge of zombies would probably get me quite a long way, I think. Yeah, definitely. So from your personal view, from when you were on the show, what was the scariest moment from your six days in the apocalypse? I think it was definitely when the abomination chased us back into um, the building and we watched, you know, the shutter was half open and we watched him eat another zombie and we, our heads were exploding at the time <laughs> you know what yeah. is going on it, that was frightening and I think being in the car do you remember the car thing yes because yeah, that, that was actually quite funny because we all got stuck in the car and I, well, I got stuck in the car because I was in the back yeah. and everyone else being small and thin and athletic all wormed their way out over in between the seats and I'm left stuck in the back of the car with the I couldn't get the seat down and I was thinking well thanks guys I'm now on my <laughs> thanks my a lot <laughs> all these zombies it. are coming out behind me thanks yeah but actually although that seemed frightening um once I got going it was obvious they were far too busy eating Sarah than they were to bother with anybody else who was running past but yeah, it was definitely the abomination. Yeah, that I think, from I think, the first, I think the first day when we arrived and we had to walk through the car park. I don't, do you remember the very beginning? Yes, we were taken up to the back of the car park and kept, you know, maybe fifty meters apart. We could see other people arriving, but we'd never met each other before or anything. And we're waiting on them to say go and you're sitting there you start to think, what on earth is going to happen I have no idea and when we come um when we've been led up to where we were going to start we actually walked through all the zombies that were waiting there surrounding the the shopping mall and they were all in character but as if they were dormant all sort of snarling and twitching at you this is before it had even started oh, wow. I thought, well, hang on a minute. The minute I start to run towards the building, they're going to catch me, and I'm never even going to get to get into the place. <laughs> yeah, that was it's like, scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. From an audience perspective, with the abomination, I don't know about you guys, I was terrified. Yeah. Absolutely terrified. Absolutely petrified. Like the whole way through, my heart was just thumping. Anytime someone was on a mission. Anytime someone was like this close to dying or dying, I was like, oh my God. It's actually interesting that you say that because honestly, the end product was, was quite disappointing, I would say, because the experience was very, very frightening for all of us. And yet when we watched it 
And when our friends and family watched it and listening to what they said about it, it didn't come across as well as I think it could have. And I don't understand why that was because I don't have the technological knowledge about. But my sister said, she said it was disappointing. And she said she thought it was something to do with the production. She said like, so when they show you running um, and then they show the zombie running, they never show you running with the zombie running directly behind you. So you didn't get that that tension and that fear. So um, yeah, it was, it was disappointing that it didn't come across as frightening as it actually was. So it's good to hear that some people were frightened by it because a lot of people yeah. didn't find it that scary. Well, you, you watched it originally when it came out and you were quite young then as well, weren't you? Yeah, Meg? that's true. I was yeah. a bit younger than most, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So we just had a comment as well saying, um, do you think you'd be a good zombie? And we were talking uh, initially before the call that actually after the uh, show finished filming, you guys went and were zombies in a, a zombie experience. And what I found really interesting was you said it was at uh, the prison in Leicester. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that was actually one of our events. Um, we originally ran um, a prison in Leicester. Um so yeah, that's it. just bringing that up for the comment uh, on Facebook. Yeah. Well, that that was a fantastic experience. I have to say, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, we had all the makeup and everything. I wore my red jacket that I wore on the show, but um, I got to stand in a kitchen and terrorize people. It was it was honestly, I, I don't know how you don't laugh when you know when you have a group of say maybe four or five. <laughs> 20 year old boys <laughs> running into a room and you go Rah! and they all fall on the floor with great difficulty with yeah, great difficulty, great difficulty. It, if you it, get a really, really good scare you definitely have to go in the corner and kind of go okay compose yourself yeah. it is honestly it was so so funny and they had the, the place i was in the wing in the prison it had a an alarm that was going on and off and what they said when the alarm was sounding the zombies had to be, you know, brain fuddled by the noise. So you weren't allowed to move or go after anyone. When, and then as soon as the alarm went off, you could go for them, you know. And um, at one point, the alarm broke. <laughs> and um, it wasn't working. So my it had to oh, be no. switched on and off manually. So my partner, who hates horror, hates anything to do with zombies, but had been with me for that night, he, they gave him a job to hide behind the reception desk and turn the alarm on and off. And he, 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 he said he, he just about wet himself the entire, the, the entire oh, no. night. <laughs> yeah, I was glad he got to see a part of it. It was very, very funny. It was so enjoyable. That oh, really good. good. It's, it's Would you ever do something thing. like that again? I'd love to, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to, yeah. It well, was great fun. Yeah. Zombie infection. We we can see if yeah. we can get a. Uh, as I was going to say, it'd be cool if we could get you know, uh, kind of like a reunion of the cast if they come and did one of our experiences. That'd be wicked. Oh, I'd love it. We'll see if we can yeah. sort something out. Yeah, the whole crew be like yeah. a wicked reunion. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd love it. I'm sure. I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of them weren't really ever weren't what you would call zombie fans, and so you know, like poor Sarah said, she never wants to hear or see anything to do with zombies ever again. <laughs> <laughs> um but um and i think meg was the same actually but um yeah i think i think they'd be they'd be up for that definitely oh wow. good it's been it's been a while now i'm sure they're, they're yeah. over it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only just it's much better what? being a zombie than being a survivor in that sense um it's it's very very funny yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't have to worry Defo. about being eaten. You worry about it's a no. Massive... You don't have to worry about doing anything. No, because <laughs> it can Just... it can be scary. You can end up actually getting some getting quite good scares as an infected as well. Like you can end up um, scaring another infected, which <laughs> we do constantly as much as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. In time, in times where we know that our um, our participants are quite far away and are um, sort of not even in yet. You know, we'll be getting into position. We'll, ju we'll just scare each other because, you know, it's brilliant fun. It, it, it's what we do. It is fun. Yeah. 
Well, it's funny because, I mean, I first got into zombies a long, long time ago when the George Romero films first came out. And my partner at the time, he, he got me to watch them when I was pregnant with my daughter. My daughter's now 36. So that's how long ago it was. I think that was when the second one came out. And um, I just think it's just... I can't remember what I was going to say now. <laughs> I've, lost, I've lost my thread. What was I say? What was my thread? Uh, no. George A. Romero's films. Yeah, no, I can't remember. I was saying, I was caught up in the George Romero film thing then for a minute. Sorry. No, it's That's fine. It's, All um, right. Just right. One last question about the show, and then Charlie, we can move on to yeah. the book. So from yeah. all the challenges from the show, which one do you think was the hardest? For everybody to do, for everyone. Either either for everyone or for an individual. And which one would you have thought, oh, maybe I could have had a go at that if you were given the chance? Um, I think crawling, crawling through the vents at night and being chased by zombies has got to be the most frightening. And there was a couple involving the, the vents. There was the very yeah. first night, I think, the electricity went off. and Night, uh, night two for the air vents. Was it yeah. night two? And yeah. was it Amina who went out and did that? Bless her. Amina, Amina and Tom. Amina and yeah. Tom. And was that when Tom got killed? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. And um, that that was, oh, hats off to them, honestly. I, when my, it's giving me goosebumps now, the thought of being asked to go out there in the middle of the night and crawl through vents. And, and it was oh, dark and, oh, I just, I don't know how I they would did do it. it. I would have been a gibbering wreck, you know. Um, so yeah, I could have done that. I think I think the one that Jordan and Jonas did when they were in the dark, the pitch black place, that must have oh. been pretty frightening again. But I probably could yeah. have done that better than I could have done crawling through vents and things like that, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Would you have been the better one to give directions or follow them? Possibly give, possibly give. Yeah, that would have meant that I wouldn't have had to gone in there. With... <laughs> <laughs> had to go in there with all those zombies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. True. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah, I think I probably would. My husband would say that I'm quite good at giving directions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. So yeah. that whole experience sounds fantastic. Um, and yeah. you've, you've actually now gone on to uh, write a book, uh, a dystopian kind of book about it. What was kind of like the main push inspiration for you to write that? So I've always had a, an interest in writing a book. It's been a sort of bucket list thing. I've never been able to do it with a working, you know, working and everything like that. And I'd started another book, a sort of much more serious book than a book about the zombie apocalypse. And I joined a writer's group and I was really struggling with this book. And they said, why don't you write something lighter, just something a bit silly and fun just to get your teeth cut on writing and you said you know you've just come out of this tv show and you've got a real interest in this topic why don't you write a, a zombie apocalypse book and I and I thought about it and I thought yeah because it's fun you know it's not serious it's nonsense and it's mm. good fun nonsense but um and I also what what interests me I think about all of these situations is how familiar locations can be transformed in in an apocalyptic scenario you know buildings and places become very very different and people become very different people change and I think that's what really interests me and so that was what made me want to write about well what all the zombie books and all the zombie movies are full of you know machete wielding heroes with big muscles and armor and helmets and everything I thought, what about an ordinary woman? You know, what would happen to an ordinary woman if she was in the middle of a, a zombie apocalypse? So that's that's kind of what prompted me to write that. And then I'd also read a book by a guy called Adrian Walker called The End of the World Running Club, which was about an apocalyptic scenario, but meteors. And um, these people had to make a journey the length of the UK. And they went through places that were familiar to me and I really enjoyed reading about the places that were familiar to me and I thought I'd quite like to do that as well so the book is all places that I know and that all my friends and family know you know down to minute detail and um, so that but that was part of it 
Um, and then it was also based on, I think, what you guys won't remember September the 11th, but on September the 11th, I was in London and my kids were, you know, at school in Birmingham. And it was kind of worrying because there was a moment or two that day when it looked as if it was going to affect the whole world. And there were talks yeah. of things happening at Heathrow and Gatwick and stuff. And I, I just really wanted to get home. And, and then everyone was on the phones and you couldn't get through and things like that. And there was a bit of that that, you know, and so after that, I remember saying to the kids, you know, if ever anything like that happens, um, go home. Don't don't go anywhere else. Just go home and we'll all go home. And we'll all, I know it sounds a bit dramatic, but yes. get home and then we'll all be together if anything. And it's like, well, if we were out and I said, if you ever get lost, you know, just stay where you are and I'll find you. Don't go wandering off. So it's, you have to have your little strategies for these things. So that was what it was all based on the book yeah oh yeah that's that sounds really really sweet um and i i really love your inspiration for that um have you got any kind of more novels in the future planned have you got any more writing that you're thinking about doing yeah well i've actually started a, a sequel to to this book to wait for me which is set six months later I, i've been really i mean i'm not i'm not a writer i'm not going to be the next margaret atwood or anything like that it's a, it's a late, late later life hobby for me and if, and if anyone enjoys reading it, I'm happy that, you know, I'll have achieved my objective. And I've had some really, really encouraging feedback um, from people, you know, which has really been a really nice surprise. And a lot of people have said, and um, they'd really like a sequel. They'd really like to find out what happens to the characters. And so that's what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm into my third chapter on, in the sequel, which is set six months later. And, and the characters have transformed, you know, the ordinary woman isn't ordinary anymore because you couldn't be ordinary after mm -hmm. you've survived yeah. an apocalypse yeah. for six months. But um, and her friendship with with the girl that she did her journey with has become really tight. I don't want to give away any spoilers or anything like that. No, you but, don't, because you know, I I actually think it sounds so good. I want to read it. So same. So I'm, I am into apoc apocalyptic stuff and, and apocalyptic books as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm pleased. I mean, I started writing it around about the time so six years ago and yeah. I finished it and um I put it aside like they say you should do and in the meantime I'd done a, a writing course a creative write, creative writing course and when I read it the second time I thought oh god this is awful <laughs> you know it could be so much better so I've rewritten it and I've just finished it while we've been out here in in the lockdown because I'm not really you know no, no distractions here it's just basically hit me and my partner here and the beach <laughs> um so yeah i've rewritten it while while we've been here and, and i launched it I, I published it in january and yeah i'm really really pleased with the reaction it's been really encouraging i mean it's not a serious book and i don't take myself seriously as a writer it's just a bit of fun yeah. where can people buy it if they want to buy it you can buy it on amazon it's all on amazon it's in kindle or paperback the kindle's 2.99 the paperback's 9.99 that sounds amazing but yeah i'll, I'll definitely gonna be um someone to go and read that um but yeah i if anyone does anyone have any more questions that they want to ask before we wrap up um let me just see where we're Saz at Saz is checking through our notes <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm I, have, I have worked hard on notes. <laughs> uh, I'm just checking the comments. Uh, another one from James. Which survivor were you closest to while in the shop for those seven, six days? Oh, golly, that's hard to say because I think I was quite close. I really did get on very well with Jonas, actually. I think because at the beginning we were probably the two of the older older survivors, I think we got on really well. I, I did have a real soft spot for Tom, I have to say, and I've kept in touch with, with him. But, yeah, probably, probably Jonas and Meg. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to say one, to be honest, yeah. Did, yeah. you, did you find there was much sort of change in yourself or in the way that people treated you after the show aired? Um, I think it was, I think it was quite hard to come back from something like that, that had been so all consuming and it's kind of like, 
nobody else has had that experience and so yeah. people don't want to hear about it and it's really hard not to want to talk about it all the time because you're just kind of letting off a bit of, of steam about it and I think it was I mean people who haven't been part of it they might want to hear about it for a few minutes and then that's it so you had to really stop yourself from talking about it my sister and my family would probably say I didn't stop myself from talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah there was, uh, that. And, and in terms of um other people I don't think many people not many people of my age and sort of social group actually watched it apart from people who knew me but I did have a funny experience when I was in the cinema maybe a few months later and we just sat down and this boy stood up and came over and said oh you're Jackie from I Survived the Zombie Apocalypse, aren't you? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't think that was going to happen. But, um, yeah, generally that was it, once you get over the shock. We did have a funny night where um, I came home. I was really looking forward to seeing my, my partner again. It's a long time to be apart. It feels like a very intense experience that you're not sharing with them. And um, yeah. he was so excited when I came home because we hadn't been able to talk to each other for well over two weeks because you weren't allowed to talk when you were in the hotel beforehand and things I think I oh, know maybe you were actually but anyway um and so we he was so excited that he said come on we're going for a drink so we we left the house and he slammed the door without his keys and so we ended up being locked out of the house and getting quite tipsy in the pub next door while we waited <laughs> on somebody to come and let us back in again so <laughs> Yeah, that was the first night back. Do you feel it changed you as a person, the experience? I don't I don't think I did. I think when you're there, you think, oh, this will change me. I'll really appreciate life and family and friends and food and things so much more. But now you say that, looking back, I think probably like all of these things, it probably hasn't. It was a great experience. I would say it's probably been one of the most... The, the the funnest experiences of my life and certainly left an imprint on me i think i think it makes you realize that you can do anything if you put your mind to it it reinforces yeah. that you wouldn't think that you'd be able to get on a tv show for example as an ordinary sort of person so the fact that you can put in an application and be accepted on something like that that's that sort of fills you with some self belief i suppose so if you can do that there's lots of things you can do so in that sense yes yeah that sounds wicked though that's uh, fantastic and it's been so so great to speak to you this evening um and uh yeah if you do want to uh buy the book it is on amazon it's uh called wait for me um and yeah you can get it on kindle as well and i'll definitely definitely be reading it uh, but yeah it's Me been too. so so wonderful talking to you jackie thank you so much for being thank on you. our podcast thank you so much thank you, thank thank you. you very yeah. much so hopefully we'll see all of you guys next week on our podcast and uh, we'll catch you guys later 